Hello there, my name is Ismas, and welcome to part 7, I think, of our uh, Blender 2.8 uh, training series and uh, making a tunnel, a scene, a sewer tunnel in Blender. So, yeah, we have done uh, the material, sorry, the modeling and everything. Uh, so, let's dive in into the materials and uh, see how to do this. So, I'll start by the simplest materials and then go to the more, compli uh, more complicated ones. Uh, so, I'll just go in. Uh, into let me just open another project here and open our Trio project so you can see we already have uh, the uh, the modeling done uh, of course I, I didn't do them at the channel the pipes but uh, if you want to do them you can do your, them yourself because I have already a lot of tutorials on that so let's start with the texturing uh, so in our scene, you can see we have some lights. Uh, those that's very easy to do, and you just let me create a very simple light here uh, because I don't I don't think I showed how to do that in this step by step tutorial. Uh, you will I'll be up, uploading the uh, the time lapse video of making the entire thing, uh, the original uh, tunnel, uh, this tunnel here on my second channel. I'll be leaving a link in the description. I think I should, I'll be uploading it today. So if you want to uh, to watch uh, the entire tunnel being built, how uh, you can go to my second channel and uh, watch that. So let me create a simple light here. Just bevel this. I'm going to apply scale and rotation. Bevel this. And uh, so this bottom part, the bottom part would not be needed. And uh, we need some kind of mesh to protect uh, the lights from anything else. So I'll duplicate those, scale them, and then hit B to separate uh, the selection. And hit, select each of these and fill them into a face or an end going like that. And then select them all again and hit I to insert them, and then delete uh, the selection. Uh, we have our mesh, but uh, right now it's just plain, so I can just hit E again while having everything selected and extrude at half our cage like that. Very simple and easy. So let's go to the materials, uh, go to the shaders. If you want to create an emission uh, light like that, that uh, glows like that. I just create a new material, I'll call it light. Then I uh, don't need the principal BSD, you just need a uh, shader, go to shader, and then add uh, emission shader. Connect this to the surface, and now uh, we have our light. So if we go to the to the render mode, and uh, turn on bloom, uh, increase the emission to something like 10. You can play around with the color here can see we have our source our source of light and we can can come into the world materials change uh, this color to black like that so that our light is as powerful so it looks more powerful but I don't want it to be full black so I'll leave it around there now you can see what uh, the kind of light we are having uh, so let's look at uh, another material so an easier one is yeah, let's create uh, this concrete material, and you can see it's kind of it kind of has that greenish tint to it, uh, to kind of simulate uh, moss and uh, yeah. So for that, you're going to need a texture. A good place to find free textures is cc0textures.com. Uh, so you can try and go there to find other materials you want to use, textures you want to use. So I'll put a new material here, call it concrete. And uh, get add an anime texture, and then navigate to my textures. So if you're getting materials from CC Zero Textures, uh, they usually come with uh, the color map, a roughness map, and uh, and a normal map. Uh, if you want, you can just plug them into into uh, your shader, and uh, you should have a full con uh, PBR material. Uh, but uh, I usually just want to go with I usually just pick uh, the color 
texture and uh, play around with that and get whatever I want and then change it in different ways uh, to get uh, the texture I want. So let me first hide everything. Uh, if you connect your material and uh, it just gives you a single color like this, uh, it's just indicating to you that uh, uh, the mesh you're applying the material to is not UV unwrapped. So let's go in and UV unwrap this. So select the object, hit tab to go to edit mode. Uh, if it goes away like that, it's because we have a curve modifier turned on. So uh, when you go to edit to edit mode, uh, that curve modifier will be disabled and uh, uh, the position of uh, the mesh will, will change as well. But uh, if you want to be in, in edit mode while uh, the curve is still enabled, you can see so that uh, the mesh is still bent as well. You just hit these two buttons so you can see now the mesh doesn't go anywhere and uh, we can preview the curve and uh, the deformation are brought by the curve, brought by the curve modifier in edit mode as well but uh, if you have this turned off it will disable any it will disable this modifier so yeah let me bring this back so i can see what's going on uh so we, we need to give you unwrap this uh, uh, and since this is a very simple mes mesh i can just select everything hit you and then unwrap you can see now we have our texture uh we have the texture connected to our uh color and uh, so if we wanted to make it uh, let's create a, a roughness map from this i also i also want to turn on uh, scene lights here uh, because by default if you are in look dev look dev mode uh, you won't be uh, your mesh will not interact with the lights or the, uh, the light will not affect your scene so let's add a light here uh, because we need that attribute to preview our roughness our roughness map roughness map so I'll take this a bit like this uh, if you see that uh, the textures the texture is a bit too large you can go to UV editing mode and uh, scale up uh, let's also make sure that uh, we are previewing the texture here uh, either scale up are uh, the are uh, the UVs or add uh, texture coordinate mapping and uh, you need to add I think it's under input texture coordinate uh, this will give you the uv input or or any other input you want to use texture coordinate mapping you want to use and uh, the other input you want to use is uh, the mapping input uh, let me see is, that's under vector i think yeah so uh, so then you connect your projection map the texture coordinate mapping you want to use uh, this time because you have uvs set for this object we can use uvs and then connect uh, the vector output of the mapping to the vector uh, input of your image. Uh, to speed this up, uh, if you have the node wrangler, add on anybody, and I, for that you just go under edit preferences and then search for, uh, go to add-ons and then search for the node wrangler add-on and then enable it that way. So let me just give it a moment to load. So you search for node wrangler and then enable that. So instead of just searching uh, the different map in uh, nodes you want to use for the texture coordinates you just select uh, the the texture you want to have coordinates for and then hit ctrl t and uh, uh, node wrangler will uh, do the, the mappings for you so uh, so if you want to increase the scale here you can just increase here increase it like this but uh, you will see that uh, if your texture is not tileable uh, all textures from cz cis is it CC? Yeah, I think it's CC zero textures uh, are tileable, uh, but I think this one was not from CC zero textures. So, but if if it's not uh, tileable, uh, then you can you you would have to play around with different settings. So, you may even want to play around with the change the from UV at object mapping and uh, change this from flat at box. Whenever you're using object mapping, sorry, object mapping, you need to change. Uh, this uh, projection mapping uh, projection type to box from uh, from flat uh, that for your texture doesn't that doesn't stretch in different areas so if I set it back to flat you'll see that uh, in some areas uh, my texture is stretching you can see here it's very stretching so you need to change it back to box uh, so that it's not stretching 
anyway so and uh, now if you're using object mapping uh, this scale is too high so we need to bring it back down and uh, if you want to, to change the values of the three vectors you see here or at the three values here at once you just select the first one and then drag all the way down and then you can s scale down like that so and uh, the reason we're changing uh, the object mapping uh, to object instead of uh, UV is that uh, if you have object mapping you can use this blending mode to kind of blend uh, the seams of your texture you can see sometimes it really works well uh, sometimes it doesn't and as you can see that uh, we still have a few seams uh, that are visible here and uh, I think it depends on uh, the kind of texture you're using so sometimes some textures do show it very prominently some textures don't so let's go back to UV texture coordinate because uh, the I was okay with the scale we had uh, the scale is good for us so uh, let's make a roughness map or a reflection map from this uh, texture uh, the way we do that uh, is that we use the same image we have here and uh, you can add you can add a car ramp convert car ramp uh, this will convert uh, this image uh, into a black and white image that will be used in our roughness node uh, as you can see from is from the roughness input it accepts a black and white image uh, from this as you can see from this uh, icon here uh, color inputs that accept color images are, are the one that are kind of orange or greenish orange like that or yellow whatever color that is so let's connect this to the factor input of our car ramp and uh, if you want to preview this this node you just hit ctrl shift and then click on the node uh, this shortcut I think is only available if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled and uh, so you can see we, we have our image so in the roughness map uh, the black parts are the most refractive parts and the white parts are not uh, that reflective so we can connect this directly into the roughness map and then preview this node ctrl shift and then click uh, to preview. you can see our trench is a bit too shiny shiny so we can control that using with the, using this uh, the, the car ramp so these reflective parts are mostly brought by these uh, this node here the, the black node remember a uh, black means more reflect a more reflective surface and uh, white means a rougher surface so let's select this and uh, reduce on the reflective names of this like this but uh, let's first preview this node as we are working so you can also keep it as keep it like this we want, we want some of that detail to still come through and uh, if you want to control how shiny or how rough uh, the surface the, the surface looks you can simply add a convert mark node uh, let the operation be add and now you can see it's changed uh, how shiny the object and uh, now if you play around with this value you can control how rough or how shiny how polished uh, the surface looks so I think this would be good enough uh, so we just need uh, some bump maps art uh, for this uh, to, to give it uh, the kind of look we want to go for so now we can uh, again we're going to still we're still going to use uh, this image because we don't have a roughness map or a normal map for this image so we're just going to produce uh, a normal map from this image and the way you do that you add a vector a bump map and uh, it accepts a height a height map and uh, a normal map but uh, since we don't have any of the two we're just going to connect this directly into our height map and we will leave the normal uh, there if you have a normal map you can just connect it there and uh, it will merge the two into one normal map uh, so let's connect this into the normal map the normal input of our texture and you can see we have a rough surface uh, but this is too strong so we can reduce this by reducing the strength of our map uh, like that you will also notice that uh, our surface kind of looks a bit wet uh, because we're creating a trend that is okay but again if you want to reduce the, uh, that kind of weighty surface you just play around with the value here so you can see we are making it really dry and uh, really wet here 
I think at around here is good enough. So in the next part, I'll show you how to make uh, the, the, uh, the, the lower parts here, because you can see this is a trench. So you imagine that uh, uh, the sewage is flowing at a, a level around here. So we want to make this uh, down part a little bit darker than the top part here. So I'll be do showing you how to do that in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.